I'm gonna set an appointment today. I'm calling it now, right in the beginning of the video. It is 11 a.m. I'm gonna spend like 30 minutes in the sauna, go to the gym. I'm dialing all day, setting one, two appointments. You wanna take a bath? Let's go take a bath, come in. <laughs> I'm back at the workstation. I'm about to meet up with one of my agents, Shova, and I'm about to interview her because she's like, she's a top producing agent within the EXP brokerage in her state. She recently moved to a new state and she developed these beliefs of like, I'm not good enough or like, this isn't gonna work out or like she had to start her business off from scratch. And I noticed these beliefs of hers made her not want to prospect, not want a cold call, not want to, she got really discouraged from doing these actions. I removed her beliefs of like, this is not going to work out and I'm not good enough. I, I removed those beliefs of hers in like 15 minutes. And literally like two days later, she's like, Aaron, I set two listing appointments and I got an agreement signed. So this just goes to show like directly how changing your beliefs directly affect your behavior I'm about to hop on a video call with her and interview her just to get her perspective on things. Next day I met her, got the listing agreement signed. And why am I doing that? It's because I no longer have that belief that's limiting me that I can't do enough or I'm not capable enough. I just crushed a Chipotle burrito. And I know I said I was gonna make some calls, but Whoa. When am I gonna get tired of looking at that? Maybe in like two months. Okay, so my, my agenda for today was eat Chipotle, go get lunch, but also I think I need to wash my car. I, I didn't wash it since I got it and I got it about two weeks ago. And before that, I don't know when it was washed last, like there's some shit on it. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna go wash this car. Right now I'm like three minutes away from my home and the benefit of my logistics is I live like three minutes away from my parents. Something recently I learned about myself and how I operate is like, you know, if you asked me year, um, basically any time in the last few years, like what I'm doing this for, I would say my family. I was doing this to retire my parents and to make sure that my future wife and kids were set up to live a great life. Um, but if I really dug into that, that was all out of fear. Cause I was like, oh, it's not gonna work out for my parents. My parents aren't gonna be able to whatever, like I need to do this for my family because like, I can't let them, like I was trying to, I, it was all fear-based. I was trying to avoid an outcome. And that's, that was the motivation behind everything that I did. It was like a fear-based motivation. Recently, I've gotten rid of that. And now I'm more, instead of operating from like, oh shit, oh shit, I gotta retire my parents and my family. Now I've been operating more from like, a, what's possible in life? What can I achieve? What what are, What is the largest outcome I can achieve in this life? Which now like by default, it opens up the possibility of like a larger, greater life because I'm not operating off of like, oh fuck, oh fuck, I'm, I need to do this or my parents and my family are screwed. Now it's more like, I believe that this outcome can happen. I wonder how big I can grow it. And as a result of that, number one, it's motivation based, not fear based. So my motivations are now like coming from my, my, my internal motivation to work is coming from like, how big can I build this? And, and, and the second thing about this is that because I'm thinking this way, I'll achieve a greater outcome. And by default, my family and my parents are gonna be able to um, retire. And I think even to a larger extent because by default, they're just gonna be taken care of from what I build. In order to start thinking this way, I had to remove the belief um, that I had of like, it's not gonna work out or I'm not capable or or what what whatever that, whatever the beliefs the foundational beliefs was that caused me to operate from fear rather than um, pleasure. The fear of my parents and my family not being able to live comfortably and the pleasure of how big can I build whatever I'm building? How big of an impact can I make on the world? Speaking of, that really opened things up in my mind. Like recently, I've come to the conclusion that my life's purpose is not to sell homes or teach people to sell homes. I'm gonna keep doing it because I'm good at it and it makes me great money. But my real life's purpose is to 
help people achieve their greatest outcomes by removing their limiting beliefs that are getting in the way. I was playing back my vlog and I realized like, maybe I should paint this garage because this is <laughs> this is embarrassing. I'm here to pick up all my, um, my like car washing tools. It's 1.50 p.m. I think I can wash my car in like 30, 45 minutes and then I gotta go to the gym and then I want to bang out some calls. I need to get some dials in. I'll be honest, um, <clears throat> I, I had a closing this month, I think. I, had a clo I have a closing for next month, but after that, I've got nothing and uh, I got bills to pay. So I really need to, I really need to lock a few deals in ASAP. Maybe I should start a challenge where I'm like, like get a listing in two weeks. I, let's let's see if I can get a listing in two weeks. But anyway, what I was saying was I'm an NLP board certified master practitioner of, of neuro-linguistics programming and using the skills in that, I'm able to take away people's limiting beliefs or I'm able to help them like reframe their limiting beliefs so that they have productive, oh, there's a police right next to me, so that they have productive beliefs that serve them positively and help them get what they want. So over the last few years, like I've removed, I've removed my limiting beliefs. I, rem I removed my friends and my agents limiting beliefs. Usually after a, a very limiting belief has been removed, their behaviors completely change because their beliefs change. And I've been seeing like what kind of impact it's had on my life or impact that's it, it's been having on like my agent's life. And I think it's now time that I turn this into an actual business and start like preaching about this stuff and, and putting out resources for you guys to like get rid of your limiting beliefs because there's two things that changed my life just hardcore. Two things that changed my life hardcore. If I don't, if I didn't do these two things, I would probably be like dead or in jail. And these two things is number one, mentorship and guidance which you get by buying knowledge. I'm a huge fan of buying knowledge. I buy mentorship programs all the time. I buy mentor programs and coaching programs all the time. By obtaining and acquiring and like buying new knowledge, you create new opportunities for yourself. You know exactly how to, you can shortcut success by doing so. And usually the people that are like crushing it in what they're doing, to work with them or learn from them, like you usually need to pay them. So that's why I say buying knowledge. And the second thing that's really changed my life is removing limiting beliefs, which is something that I learned how to do by doing the first thing, which is buying knowledge. I learned how to remove limiting beliefs and it completely shifted and changed my life. If you look at my very first YouTube video that's uploaded on this channel, um, I made that video the day I removed the belief of like the fear of what other people think of me like the fear of judgment. I had such a crippling fear of judgment. Like I wouldn't post anything. I wouldn't want to tell. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like if I sold a house, I wouldn't post about it because I didn't want my like aunts and uncles to see, or like, I didn't want people to be like, well, he, Aaron's been inconsistently posting. So like, he's probably not selling that many homes. And I didn't want people to be like, uh, Aaron's probably not selling many homes. So I, I just wouldn't post. And then I'd sell another home and I'm like, should I post this? I'm like, uh, but, but people are gonna know like I haven't been posting so it's it's gonna seem like I'm not selling any homes because I'm not posting about it. And so I would not post and then I'd sell another home and I'd be like, should I post about it? Oh, but people are gonna think I haven't been selling homes because I haven't been posting about it. And it was this like weird loop and cycle of like never, po never telling anyone what I was doing because I was scared of how they would perceive me. After I got rid, I got rid of the fear of judgment, I posted a 15 minute long rant about my fear of embarrassment and my fear of failure onto YouTube and to Facebook. And it's just so crazy. It, it, it just goes to show like how a, much of a control your beliefs have over your behaviors and actions and decisions you make. So by getting rid of those beliefs, um, I, I'm really in a position where I can do whatever I want without a fear of failure, fear of success, fear of rejection, fear of embarrassment. Like, I don't give a fuck. I, I really believe everything's gonna work out for me in the end. Like, I believe God's taken care of me. I believe like everything's gonna work out. I believe I'm capable of doing whatever I put my, my like eyes on. Like all of my beliefs are pretty congruent with the outcome that I'm looking for in life. Maybe I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't be glazing myself. I, I want you guys to feel the congruence between my words and like my my unconscious, you know? Cause you can say, 
You can say like, oh, I believe this is gonna work out, or I believe I can make a million a year, but you can see inconsistencies and incongruence in, their, in someone's body language or their tonality when they say something that they, inside, in the back, in, the un, in their unconscious mind, you can see the incongruence happening when they say something that's incongruent to what they truly believe. You know, like you ask anyone out at wherever and you, and you ask them like, hey, do you think you're capable of like achieving this? And they'll be like, oh yeah, of course. And consciously, yeah, of course they're gonna say, yeah, like, of course everyone consciously thinks they can do it, but unconsciously, do they really believe that? Or uh, are they lying? All right, I'm at an O'Reilly's looking for uh, some like ceramic wax. Hi, between these two products, uh, which one would be the better option? Personally, from what I've heard, Mother's is almost universally the stronger product compared to Meguiar's or Total Wax. Mm, okay, uh, let's do Mother's. All right, ready to wash my car. I'm at my parents' house because my condo, HOA, doesn't allow me to wash my car because of the chemicals. I made a video here on Instagram that explained the story of how I gave my parents my car and how cold calling changed my life and learning the framework of conversion, how it's changed like the predictability of my business and how I've been able to get, give my parents, oh, <laughs> there's my old car. So the story is my dad totaled his car and my mom had to drive my dad around in this, which was very problematic because they had very different schedules. So it was taking a lot out of my mom to drive my dad around and I didn't want my parents to live like that. So I gave them my old car. This is my car that I got after I started to kind of see success in real estate. And I had this for a few years, but when my dad totaled his Mustang and I heard my parents were living like that with one car, I was like, I can't, bro, I can't have my parents live like that. So I gave them that car. And then I went to, I, I flew to California to get the white interior black IS350 F Sport, drove that for 18 months. Um, and then I made a video of explaining that story while I was washing my um, my black IS350. And the comments were like, they thought I lived with my parents or like, they were like, yeah, but like you're, st yeah, great, you did all that, but you still live with your parents. And I'm like, dang guys, like, you don't know my life. It's 3.10, so I ended up taking an hour. Dang, bro. But now it's time to go to the gym. That's probably gonna take an hour, and uh, I'll try to get some calls in before I call it a day. Remember, I said at the beginning of the vlog, I would set an appointment before the end of day. Comb, your boy hit 15 minutes in the tanning booth. My friend who's a big black strong man told me that uh, it's supposed to like quadruple my amount of creatine and uh, <laughs> quadruple scoop my protein powder so dude this guy's big and black so i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna disregard his um advice you know my goal is to be big and black like christian <laughs> all right it's now 4 55 p.m and my desire to make calls has drastically disappeared i think mostly because number one it's sunday and it's that dark outside and that's giving me like the feeling of, I shouldn't be calling these people right now, but you boys got money to make. So always call them twice when you're following up. Hello, this is Tim. Hey Tim. Probably gonna be doing that in the next year or two. I'll follow up with you next year. Um, let's see if we can get you 1.1. If not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna promise you the world and not be able to fill over that, you know? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. Straight shooting and you know, I'll be honest with you. That's where we're at. So. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Tim, you have a All good, right. uh, you have a good night. Hello? Hey, Vicky, it's Aaron Yoon. If I decided to do it, it would be between probably April and June. Okay. So I have a $500,000 listing coming up sometime in April and June. Um, this, this gal I've stayed in touch with for the last like year, two years now. That's gonna be worth about 15 grand, but I gotta wait until April. All right, Michael. Well, you have a good thank night. You. I will reach back out in like a month and see if anything's changed, all right? Alrighty, thank you. All right, bye, Michael. Bye. Holy fuck, that took 46 minutes. 
Eagle or this is Aaron. All right, so I just followed up for an hour and a half. Um, it's 6.30 p.m. now, I think. I, 7 p.m. on a Sunday night. When it's pitch black out, I just don't feel like I should be calling this late. Uh, <laughs> but maybe that's a limiting belief of mine. You know, mid-call, I was actually like thinking about how I need to, how I need to, um, pay my ISAs, how I only have one deal closing next month, and after that I had got nothing else. And I did start to get a little stressed out on like, oh fuck, like I've got bills to pay. So I'm feeling a little bit of pressure, definitely have to start going a little harder at this. I think like the last month, I've kind of taken a, a lackadaisical approach now that I've got ISAs following up and like doing everything like, I haven't been going as hard as I could be. Um, in fact, I've been trying to like have my listing partners go out on stuff and then I'll take 50% of that. But like, I don't know if I should be doing that right now. Maybe I, I should be, I should, I think I should be going in there. I, I should be going to these appointments to go close them. Um, and I think I need to hire like an assistant. Instead of giving half of my commission to my listing partners, I should have an assistant on payroll that I pay her a few thousand dollars a month to take care of what I don't want to do in the transaction. I think actually that might be the best thing to do because I just, you know, I just gave a listing partner of mine an $850,000 transaction and I'm having to do a lot of handholding on her behalf. And 50% of that is $13,000. If I'm paying like an assistant 2,500 a month, like that's like six months of salary for her. Whereas I'm giving this chick that I'm handholding like half the commission, which is 13K. Um, and I still have to handhold her on that. Like maybe I'm doing this wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to run my business a little more efficiently. And you guys are literally just watching me try to figure that out. Yesterday I told y'all um, the reason why I'm still single and how I'm having difficulty finding a girl here in Seattle. And let me clarify. I don't have a hard time finding a girl. I don't think it's a hard thing to do to find a girl that would want to date me. The issue is I'm the kind of girl I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that is very that was raised in a traditional household with a strong father figure in the house, raised Christian, unvaccinated, can cook and clean, can be nurturing. I'm looking for someone that can somewhat match me in intellect someone that can hold a, a really good conversations. I'm looking for someone that can like stimulate me intellectually. And that's what I mean when I say I can't find a girl like that. Like, I just don't think girls like that are number one to, I think girls like that are hard to find to begin with. And number two, um, there's a huge lack of that, I believe, in Seattle because these girls are very liberal and like indoctrinated by the public education system. They're probably vaccinated. They're probably modern feminists, which are a complete opposite of like the traditional chick I'm looking for. Like, I don't have a problem getting girls. I have a problem finding the girl that I'm looking for. So I, I want to make that distinction right here. All right, I'm not some fucking loser. Ooh getting a call. Hey, Victoria. Yeah. What if we got together and I could show you what kind of options you have to move to? We can kind of create a plan so you know, you, so you no longer panic when you think of moving. Um, because at least you know what to do. We know what needs to happen. And um, if you like the plan, you can take an action on it. If not, like you could sit and think on it, but at least you know what your options are. I just don't want to be under any obligation right now, but I would take note of it. Victoria, you're I not looking, I mean, I'm not looking you to sign anything. I'm just kind of showing you what your plans are. If you like it and you like me, we can move to, like, we can help you. I can help you do it. There for several years and I'll tell you what, that's some scary stuff. Up. Yeah, you want to do like tomorrow at 6 p.m.? I can't do it tomorrow. Um, now, Victoria, is this because like you don't see value in meeting or or what's what's stopping you from meeting? Oh, I have things I have things I have to do and I don't know if I'm going to be here at 6 p.m. What other day works for you, Victoria? Because if you can't, if you, 
You don't know? So, well, hang on now. Some issues and things starting on elder specialists. So I could see some. Victoria, when would you like to meet? I got to go to the bathroom. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll see you on Tuesday you. at 1, okay? So Tuesday at 1. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, have a good night. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. All right, there's my appointment. All right, at the very last minute, I set that appointment. Um, I had to rush off the phone so I could take a shit. <laughs> you know, I've, I've met with sellers like this before, and for someone in that position, she doesn't have a lot of great options because her funds are limited, and because where we live is so expensive, like, I don't know if she's going to have a good outcome, but I think... Something can happen, and let's see what's possible. So that's today's vlog. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, maybe I'll make one. Maybe I'll make another one tomorrow.